Once upon a time, in 1831 to be exact, the people of England were seeing new and amazing things. It was an age of scientific discovery, and the chap known as Michael Faraday was at the heart of it. Here is the man himself. Back then, he was a humble bookbinder and a self-taught chemist. But through his knowledge and his experiments, he was gaining the admiration of the whole world. What did Faraday do that was so groundbreaking? He discovered a new law of physics, the law of induction. That is the object of this film. In one of his first public demonstrations, Faraday took a simple ring of iron and wound two pieces of copper wire around it. Nothing so extraordinary about that, thought the gathered audience. But then he added the key ingredient, electricity. When one of the wire coils was connected to a battery, or a voltaic pile as they called it back then, an electric current flowed through it. But here's the funky part. There was also a current in the second coil. Suppose the second coil was connected to a light bulb. For a second, the audience would have seen the bulb flash. The two coils were not connected to each other in any way. They were insulated so no current flowed in the iron ring. So how on earth did electricity jump from the first coil to the second one? It did not jump, it was induced. This was the great revelation of Faraday, that an electric current in one piece of wire could induce another current in another wire. But what exactly is induction? Let's go back to the modern age and look closer. It turns out that when electricity flows along a wire, it creates a magnetic field. The lines of this magnetic field curve around the wire in circles like rings around a finger. I'm going to take this loop of wire and stick it inside the magnetic field. The loop contains something called a galvanometer, which is a very sensitive ammeter for measuring tiny currents. Watch what happens. When I insert the loop into this magnetic field, the galvanometer moves. It is detecting a small current. I take the loop out again, and the galvanometer moves again. But if I just hold the loop still like this, there is no current detected at all. My instrument doesn't move. It's only when I move the wire into or out of the field that I get a response. Faraday saw this too, and he realized that an electric current was induced by a changing magnetic flux. Flux is given by the strength of the magnetic field multiplied by the area of the loop moving through it. In order to get a current inside the loop, the magnetic flux must change. This only happens when I stick the loop into the field or take it out. When it's completely inside the magnetic field or completely outside it, the flux does not change. This is induction, ladies and gentlemen, the manipulation of electricity through a changing magnetic flux. Today we call it Faraday's Law. The one thing Faraday didn't do was to write down his law as a mathematical equation. That got him some frowny looks from physicists who were very keen on their maths. Today we have an equation which looks like this. It is written in terms of induced EMF or voltage because whenever there's a current in a piece of wire, there is also a voltage. The voltage across my loop of wire is equal to the change in magnetic flux through it divided by the time the change happens in. So I can make a big voltage by making the loop bigger which would increase the magnetic flux. Or I could move it in and out of the field very fast so the time is less. Faraday knew this and we should be very grateful for what he discovered. This is the exact same principle that allows electric generators to work. For instance, in a hydroelectric dam there are turbines. In a turbine, there is a large magnet that spins whenever water flows through the dam. The magnet is inside a stationary coil of wire, and as it spins, there is a changing magnetic flux. Therefore, electricity is induced in the wire, and it travels out from the dam to power your home and ultimately charge up your iPhone. 